want to get your opinion on how do you think the fight is going to go between McGregor and Aldo? That's one of the amazing things, and it's one of the things I actually don't get involved in at all. I stay completely out of it. I think when I've been watching this world tour, and one amazing tour has been around all the cities, from Rio all the way back up to the US, or to Miami, to Boston, to New York, then into Canada, to Vegas, to LA, and then to London yesterday and here today. I've been watching everything that's going on. And for me, it's one of those great things that when that cage door locks, the octagon closes, you can actually take the belt out, that's not there. You're going to have two guys fighting for the world championship. That's what it's really about. And you know, whether it's a defending champion or say challenger for it, doesn't matter. It's two guys at the top of their athleticism getting ready to see who's the ultimate winner on the night. Do you think everyone should some kind of a business perspective or a marketing point of view, this type of tour, I think it might set a precedent? Or do you think possibly with Connor's personality and looking at maybe the other UFC champions that maybe only he could carry something like this? Well, I think it's not just Connor that's carrying this. We've got, got a champion that's been around for 10 years who's done an amazing job and who's not going to give up that belt too easily. So I think it, it, it's showing the evolution of our business from a business perspective that we're able to put on events like this. We've got to, we'll have over 3,000 people in the arena here tonight just to watch a press conference. How amazing is that? Actually, there were 68,000 people in the waiting room on the ticket site on the day that we went out. We did the tickets in 2 minutes 48 seconds, all the tickets were gone. So the, it's not just the World Tour, it's not just Connor, it's not just the UFC, it's just the evolution of what's been happening over a number of years. And we, we've brought it to life and nowhere better to bring it to life and to finish the tour than here in Dublin. Let's say Connor wins the belt. What's the... Is there talks going on with the stadium? Have you been thinking that far ahead? I know, I know last year we asked the same question. But as we get closer now and the goal is, is, is a couple of months away, he possibly wins it. Is it on the horizon? I think it's one of the, the great questions you guys always throw at me. So I'll give you an example. We were in Krakow a, a couple of weeks ago announcing our, our fight and announcing uh, Crow Cop against Gonzaga. And then we have Jimmy Manoa fighting Jan Blakovic. And I've been asked a question since the day I walked into the UFC, when are you coming to Poland? And there's one guy that keeps asking me, it's his first question at every press conference. And the first question that he asked, he put his hand up and he was the first guy to ask it. He said, so when are you going to Russia? I was like, I just can't win these battles. I just can't keep up. I can't keep everybody happy. But if Conor wins, would we love to come here and put the world title defence in his hometown? Absolutely. Will we do everything possible to do that? Absolutely. Connor said yesterday, you know, that he'd build a roof on Crow Park if need be. Coming in on that plane last night, I was like, oh, what is going on here? This whole world's coming to an end. If you walk outside there now, the wind will blow you right down the street. So I think the, the thing is the weather. We've got to find the right way of doing it. We've also got to get the authorities to help us. You know, and we need you guys to help us with that. We, we definitely, you know, I can't have a curfew conversation. I want to have that conversation. I want to help get people to understand what we can do and how we can do it. Think about what we did in Stockholm. We had 30,000 people at four o'clock in the morning watching Alex Gustavsson fighting um, Anthony Johnson. Who would have thought that 30,000 people would stay up till four in the morning rather than going to bed on the Saturday night? I mean, what a great night that was, and fans from all over the world. The financial impact on the city was in excess of $10 million. The mayor of the city brought us and gave us an award for what we did for the city. That's the way Dublin has to think and has to approach this. And I open with welcome arms and I'll meet with the Lord Mayor, who hopefully will be here today. I'll meet with the city councillors. We meet with anybody, with Crow Park, with the Residence Authority. I do not want a Garth Brooks situation. You know, we want to do this and we want to do it in our way of working hand in hand with everybody. One big problem, and he's going to be sitting up there tonight, it's a guy called Jose Aldo. So let's see what happens after July. Just very quickly on that point, Dave, do you think it's an absolute necessity given, you know, other other gates for world title fights that if it were to come back there and that would have to be a stadium that it could just be made happen in in a, in a more, I suppose, modest environment, but it would still be a huge event because it's Conor McGregor defending his belt in Dublin, hypothetically. Yeah, I, I think um, the way that we have to view these things, and especially here in Ireland, you've got two ends of the spectrum. You've got a 9,000-seater stadium down the road 
the Trina, I think you call it now, the Trina, say I keep up, but even though I'm not living here anymore. You got the Trina for 9,000, and then you got Crow Park for 90,000. So somebody give me something in between. You know, that, that's really what we would like. Oh, yes. uh, it's not big enough Yviva. in terms of the, 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 the Aviva, we could go to the Aviva, but it's still an outdoor arena. So we, we're looking, and if you look at all the events we run around the world, the majority of them are indoors. Mm -hmm. um, even the stadium event we ran in Stockholm has a roof, you know, so it, it's not a complication that we can't overcome. It's something that we can do. We, we run events at all different times all around the world. You guys know you follow the sport day in, day out. So we can run them early in the morning, we can run them in the afternoon, we can run them in the evening, we can run them through the night. It's a 24 hour global clock, because that's where our fans and that's where our consumers are engaging in the product. So we just want to make it work and we would love nothing better than to come back here if that's what we could do and if Connor wins. But yeah. Yeah, Jose. It's so good, the O2. Will it ever come to a case that you can charge Las Vegas prices for the O2 so the UFC makes a bigger gate? Or is it the kind of spectacle of getting a stadium is what's really the driving factor behind it? No, I think it, it's about satisfying demand. You know, as I said, we've got 68,000 people looking to try and get in here today. It's about satisfying the demand and getting all our fans to see what we can uh, on the night. We, you know, if you take any arena, we're all about access. We want to make sure that as many people access the event as possible. As many people access our product, whether we're on TV with Satanta, whether we're on PIC TV, on free-to-air TV for the Krakow event and the Berlin event, here in Ireland as well, whether you want to watch it on fightpass.com, whether you want to go to the event or whether you want to turn up to a press conference. It's all about access and getting as many people as possible to view, taste, participate, come to International Fight Week. Look at the week that's going to go on out there, even if you haven't got tickets for the, for the fight itself. What a great week it's going to be, with loads of activity, the World Expo going on, loads of mixed martial arts exhibitions throughout the week, pool parties with the Octagon Girls, with past champions, with current champions. The week will be amazing. I was talking to some guys earlier today, and I was talking about Seville. I went down to Seville to the UEFA Championship Final when Celtic played Porto, where 50,000 Irish turned up and they had 8,000 tickets. So why couldn't Las Vegas be the same as that? You know, let's make this a big Irish party and let's all get out there and ha have some great fun with it. Two things on that. You mentioned PIC. Um, the BT deal is up in 2016 from what we think we know. PIC are owned by the same people, on Sky, Sky Sports. Is this the early testing ground that there could be a new partner for the UFC in 2016? Or is, B is BT Sport, has it been the platform that you always thought it was going to be? BT Sport are great partners of ours and, and you know we're the first ones that took us to a brand new audience and we're working really well with BT Sport on new programming, uh, <coughs> UFC Fighting Talk, I don't know if you guys have watched it, which is an absolute great way of, of seeing uh, a different view on the sport in itself. BT are our partners all the way through to next year as you've said and, and we want to remain with BT. Um, what we've always nice said, sports, what we've always said, is that we would love and always want to have a free-to-air option. Now, so we've got Satanta here in Ireland, but we've got three, and you watch three on a delayed uh, fight on a Tuesday night. So we always wanted uh, uh, to try and maximise that. We did the same in the UK last year, where we were on Channel Five and we were on BT on exactly the same night. So what we're doing with this offering is making it accessible again to more consumers on PIC TV. And you're just talking about International Fight Week. Um, there's the Invicta on the Friday, there's UFC on the Saturday, UFC on the Sunday, and UFC on the Wednesday in mm -hmm. San Diego. Yep. All of the Irish fighters are going to look to get on the 11th card. Do you think there's going to be an overflow of them coming on to the 12th? So like, put it this way, you're going to Vegas, why don't you stay an extra day and see Paddy Houlihan or Ashton Daly fight the following night? Um, I'll leave that question, I'll give you Sean Shelby and Joe Silva's number. I have no clue what way they're going to organise it, but what I do know is that the main fight on that night and the co-main, which is another world title fight as well, is just the pinnacle of what will be a fantastic week during International Fight Week. Anybody who hasn't been there and who loves this sport or who loves following the sport and who loves engaging, it is the place to go. It, 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 there is nowhere else in the world. It's the fight capital of the world and it's a week of action that will be going on. It'll be amazing. Can you describe, like, as an Irishman who's now leading the charge within Europe for the UFC, how important and it is going back to International Fight Week, it being such a big event, and having Connor as the main event? 
I, I think International Fight Week, I only experienced it for the first time last year. I'd never been to the event and I was just blown away by, number one, the enthusiasm of the fans. They stand in lines every day of the week waiting to meet some of the stars of the past, some of the stars of the future, some of our current stars, just to get an autograph. And, you know, what goes on throughout that week, there's another competition that you missed out on, maybe you're not aware yet, but the World Championships of International Mixed Martial Arts at an amateur level will be hosted during fight week as well. So there's great opportunities for everybody to go there and it, it, it's an amazing event. You've got to get yourself there. What on, on the amateur championships, since the whole thing with the Judo Federation, um, it seems like they're trying to take the sport back a little bit. They don't want outside help, they want an outside partnership. And I think they even took the European Championships off out of Glasgow because maybe the UFC sponsorship. Are you aware of getting involved with something like the IMMAF's World Championships? Because last year, a lot of Irish <coughs> athletes qualified and fought under the expectation that they would be going. And then the funding pulled out and look, maybe only three athletes from Ireland represented them mm -hmm. because they had to pay their own way. Is that something maybe the UFC are going to look at from grassroots level of martial arts in Ireland? So I think they're, they're two separate conversations, the judo conversation and the mixed martial arts. Well, I'm, I'm maybe a little bit wary of getting... No, we're not wary of anything. So let me handle the international mixed martial arts and then remind me to come back to the judo conversation. <coughs> So the uh, IMAF, the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation, is really only in existence 18 months to two years at this point in time. And we're huge supporters in many fronts of the setting up of that organization. 